Welcome back to Cody's Chopper Corner. In today's video, I'm going to be starting a new series called Where to Start When Building a Chopper. This episode will be covering the infamous Evo Sportster, the dreaded girl's bike. Fortunately, there's the Harley Davidson Sportster 883. is it? Let's find out. So first things first, what is an Evo Sportster? The Evo Sportster started in 1986 i believe and the, i think they're currently making them still they're an awesome platform if you're trying to build a motorcycle that's reliable and fast so we'll go into these a little bit deeper so the years that we're going to cover 1991 to 2003 and that's mainly because between those years there weren't very many major changes and that's what most of the parts are going to fit. Some of them will go back into the Ironhead Sportster all the way up to current, but for the most part, you're going to want to stick with the 91 to 2003. And one of the first things is the early years of Evo Sportsters, they were kind of hopping around, changing stuff. There was different motor sizes things that are more specific to the earlier years. And then they also had a four speed still up until 1991. So if you go to the other end of the spectrum, the 2004 Harley came out with their rubber mounted Sportster frame. And that helps with vibration and a whole bunch of stuff. They're great bikes, but if you're gonna chop one, after you get up to 2004, they start getting more expensive, harder to work on, harder to build a chopper out of. The wiring's a little more advanced than the earlier ones. So that's what we're gonna cover today. So again, that year range from 91 to 03, a lot of the parts are gonna fit throughout that whole year range and they're super reliable. They're really good bikes. They're gonna be on the cheaper side and they made a ton of them so you can pick them up for relatively cheap i see them around me where i live in utah they'll go for under five grand with pretty low mileage so if you're looking to build a, a chopper it can get expensive so buying at a lower price point will allow you to build a better bike you'll have more money to throw at it Speaking of price, that's another question I get asked a lot is how much does it cost to build one of these bikes? And it's kind of a hard question to ask because or it's a hard question to answer because you can't really put a price on it. It's like asking how much does a car cost? You know, like it could be from like throwing a swap meet bike together with just a bunch of used crappy parts for like a couple grand and you could have a cool bike or you could go all out and buy the best of the best and fully build the motor and the sky's the limit really. Another question is, how, how should I set my bike up? There's so many different styles you can choose from. That's kind of the fun part about doing this. I, I've said it before in other videos, these bikes are all kind of like a blank canvas when you get it. Uh, it's fun to have a lot of parts laying around. You can kind of start mocking stuff up and trying to get a better idea of what you want. You you really need to be asking yourself too, like what kind of riding you intend on doing with the bike. Like if you want a chopper that you can still travel the country on, then an, an Evo Sportster is definitely going to be something to look at. You're going to want to think about if you're going to have your old lady on the back, you know, or if you're going to have your boyfriend who's not cool enough to build a chopper, he's on the back of your bike. It really all depends. Like, 
you want to think about the long run. Are you going to run that small chopper gas tank on there where you're going to have to fill up every 80 miles or whatever it is? Or your sissy bar angle, can you fit somebody on the back? So things like that you really want to think about. And yeah, if you're going to build like a mile muncher, it's probably going to be different than a bike that you would just ride around town. So keep that in mind when you're looking for parts and trying to decide what style you want to do. Because yeah, going back into style, like I said, there's so many different styles you can choose from. Like you can do like a short 60s chopper with one, do like a 70s long chopper, crazy molded everything, or... A, my personal favorite for these bikes are the like tough guy performance style chopper bunch of style they look super super cool really fast you can build these motors like crazy a lot of guys that run harley drag bikes are running off the sportster platform speaking of the performance end of these there's tons of companies that offer a lot of cool stuff for these like hammer performance you can send your heads into those guys and for like a pretty reasonable price they'll do like a full port on them uh, they do a lot of stuff with the head work so you can run taller cams uh, they offer a big bore kit i've done the 1200 kit the 1250 the 1275 these things scream and going back real quick to the whole girl bike thing i think that all started with probably like the original form these bikes came in they were designed to be a light uh a lightweight fast agile bike which also transfers over to if you're starting out or your wife or girlfriend or somebody wants to start riding it's a lot easier to throw them on a sportster than it is a road king but they are fast they're easy to build they're pretty cheap to build and after you chop these bikes up, it, they make a very respectable, cool chopper. So an overall look at these bikes, is it a girl bike? Yeah, maybe, maybe if a girl's riding it. But like I said, they're, they're awesome motorcycles. They're relatively cheap compared to building like older big twins. Uh, reliability is probably, I don't know what else would beat it. And they're cool. They're super cool. Lots of parts to choose from. You have companies like Lowbrow, TC Bros, Throttle Addiction. Uh, the Gas Box is a really cool one. Those guys are always putting out a lot of cool parts. They have full frames. And another thing is all those companies I just mentioned and probably more that I'm forgetting, they have really good customer service. So like if you have questions about your bike, uh, if a part will work or not. If it's not in those, in the description, that's usually pretty detailed. Uh, those guys will usually, usually answer your questions and uh, get you set on the right track. So yeah, the Evo Sportster. It's an awesome, awesome platform for building, especially if it's your first bike that you're building. So if you're on the fence about buying an Evo Sportster or building one, uh, hopefully this video had some information that you thought was useful and get out there, get inspired, go build something.